Welcome to the sample video for the Direct Feedback Coaching Program. In this video, I'm going to explain what Direct Feedback Coaching is, and I'm going to give you a sample. I'm going to show you a sample video of me doing the Direct Feedback Coaching. So first of all, what is Direct Feedback Coaching? Well, Direct Feedback Coaching comes from me trying to think of what I could do, of, of any possible way I could more efficiently teach people how to PVP at a pro level. How could I rapidly increase someone else's PVP skill and proficiency and what was the way that I could do that the best and the fastest and I was thinking about that and in the process I came across this video now to explain this video that we're about to see and that I'm gonna do the feedback coaching on this video was submitted to me the day of the release of my frigate PVP pro guide uh, the frigate PVP pro guide was the first PVP product that I released and this guy watched a couple of the videos in that guide and after just watching a couple of them he was able to go out and get this his first kill while outnumbered now I'm sure he's had kills before this where he attacked and did one-on-one -on -one PvP and that kind of thing and maybe fleet PvP where he was in a fleet but this was his first kill where he actively went out hunted multiple targets and managed to get a kill in a situation that unless played right with good tactics like I teach in the frigate PvP pro guide he would have lost but by using good tactics he won the fight well in watching this video I was really psyched and thrilled that the first day that I released my guide that people were going out and getting kills and there were a lot of people doing it it was a huge success and I really loved it but I was so thrilled about this that he was able to go out and do this the first day that I really wanted to do this this video for him um, but what you'll notice is he uses good tactics he gets the kill he does well but there are a few individual things and other people are gonna have these problems too not everything's individual and you'll probably learn some from it as well but there are some things individual to each and every pilot in the game and the way they do their PvP the way they fly their ship the way they do their overview all these different factors that come into play in PvP that have a small effect and some of them that can be the smallest little thing that have a huge effect and cost you every fight you're in so the problem with that is is that people don't realize what their problems are until they know they have problems so if you're making a, a little mistake like in certain fights you're let's say using the the wrong module and you don't realize it well that's that's probably not the best example maybe in some fights you have your overview set up wrong and you're using the wrong overview set it's not showing the right information you don't know that that's a problem you don't know that there's a better way to do it until someone tells you and so that's the whole purpose behind reverse feedback coaching is what I did is I completely reversed the uh, the process of teaching PvP so I can teach you all the tricks and tactics and secrets and all the stuff you need to know to PvP at a higher level but I can't correct your mistakes in the little things that you're doing that are costing you fights and the little optimizations that you're missing along the way there's certain things that I can't teach you unless I know that you're doing them wrong so I thought well what could I do and basically the answer to giving someone the fastest boost to their PvP skill possible was to completely flip the process on its head so instead of recording videos of me PVPing and then trying to teach from that which is a fantastic way to do it and it helps the most amount of people but what could I do on an individual case-by-case -case basis for each individual pilot that would be even more powerful when paired with that because you know correcting mistakes takes isn't gonna help you if you don't know what to do this guy knows what to do but he's got a couple little optimizations that we can make that will make him a better pilot and get him more kills and end up making his game even more fun and even more enjoyable so basically flip the whole process on the head have him record the video have the the client record the video of themselves PVPing, and then I can quickly look at that video and first time through the video usually I can see ten different things that they could do to improve their PVP their fighting style all the little things they could do that would make an instant improvement to their PvP and that's the whole idea behind reverse feedback coaching so let's go ahead and get started you can see here this was the video he made and um, he was very proud of it and I was very proud of him he got the first kill while outnumbered so that's how he titled it let's go ahead and play the video now before the video gets started right here 
let's pause and now I'm gonna give you a warning I've just installed some new software that allows me to write on the screen so that I can do this even better and make it a little bit more interactive and um, better for the viewer problem is I don't really know how to use it yet I've been playing with it all day and I'm still a little bit rough so hang with me and uh, we'll get through this and I'll get better at it as I go so I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna start my little drawing thing alright I think I have it so you look here the first thing we want to do is we want to look at a setup we want to look at how he has his screen set up let's ignore what's going on on the field on the battle space here just ignore that let's look at his screen setup first thing you notice we start top left left side of the screen this is all good but look at this local chat I recommend this to everybody he's got it exactly how I recommend it have local chat separate from all the chats and have it expanded out so that you can see a large list of names here the reason for that is because you need to see when the system fills up and when the system fills up and you have your local chat like this you'll see this list rapidly expand you can't rely on just watching this little number there's a little number right here on top of local chat that shows you how many people are in system but when that number changes it doesn't really grab your attention if you have that really small you're not going to see that number changing because you're going to be focused on the center of the screen here or maybe over here on your modules or your selected item window or your overview you're not going to be paying attention to this little number if this window is was small so it's hugely important to have that window expanded so that out of your peripheral vision uh, your peripheral vision notices movement the most you'll see the movement of this list rapidly expanding and that's going to make you better in PvP because you're going to be able to monitor this even though you're focused over on this other area of the screen it's really huge having this small little number right there I've tried it to try to free up space on my screen I've tried to rapid like crazy reduce this um, local chat to as low and small as it would go just so I could monitor that number doesn't work I got blobbed all the time because I never saw it I never paid attention to the number but when I have it expanded I see this rapidly fill up it's a column here and you'll just see the names just drop as it fills and it's pretty dramatic and it gets your eyes attention and you'll notice big thing he's doing it right good job so next thing let's come across the screen let's look at his modules he has his modules exactly like mine and exactly how I would run them in this situation not saying it's the best way to do it but it's good and um, it's a good thing he copied me there what's good about it he's got his warp scram and his guns up in the top slots top slots are operated by F keys F keys allow you to be faster in a fight if you have your left hand on the keyboard your right hand on the mouse you can control more things faster and more efficiently than if you did everything by the mouse um, for example shift click to overload stuff um, F1 F2 to run your modules the one thing here that might be optimized and that I don't even do myself I've tried it but even though logically it's a smart thing to do I'm so trained in doing it this way the way he has it right now and having my micro warp drive in the mid slot I'm so it's so hard hardwired into me that that's where it's supposed to be that it's I've tried to make the change and I just can't do it I'm just I can't unteach myself that the maybe bad habit of having it there um, what might be a little bit better than this um, that I like again I don't do because I just don't like it but it's faster is to put your micro warp drive on every single ship you fly micro warp drive in the first slot that's F1 warp scram in the second slot or disruptor that's F2 if you have any web F3 and then your weapons and your nozzles and your newts beyond that so you can operate your most important modules with the F keys leaving your left hand in relatively one spot not having to move it too much so he's done well there next what you'll notice here is the selected item window most people when they get the game by default the selected item window is usually at the top here and it's right at the top top corner as far as it possibly could be from your modules I mean, where you're spending your most time in a fight your modules your selected item window that's where your mouse is spending time if you're having to run up here run back down he paid attention he watched my HUD, op HUD optimization video and he learned this from that great job um, 
that makes them a better PvPer. That's great. Next, we come over here to the scanner. I personally keep my scanner over on the left side, but it doesn't matter. Um, everything else is fine. He's got it right. He's got the right ranges. Um, he's using the right overview, setting the PvP overview. He's got everything just right. Um, looks good. Now, the overview, if you look at his, uh, his overview tabs, he has PvP, scan, drones, uh, normal, Rex. Don't know what normal is, but uh, all the others are perfect, just like I teach. Have a scan overview to help you use your directional scanner to find stuff. Have a PvP overview to get rid of all the clutter. Have a drones overview with nothing but drones to help you quickly lock and shoot drones in the situations where you need to do so. And uh, beyond that, it doesn't really matter. Um, the Rex overview, it can be helpful at times. Um, there are some times when I wish I had one, but I don't run one. Um, I've wanted one in the past, but not enough to actually go in and create it. It's personal preference. These are the three most important, and he has them. So, bravo, good stuff. Now, there's one problem I see here. If you look at the overview, what columns does he have? He's got the standard distance, name, type, right? You need to know the name for target calling, that kind of thing. More important, you need to know the type, what type of ship. If your overview doesn't include type, you're you're in big trouble. You need to know what the ship they're flying is. Um, I think that about two years ago, when you got the game, by default it didn't show type, and that was, uh, that was bad. Um, I think now by default it does add type for you. But what he has here is transversal. Now transversal and knowing what the transversal velocity of your opponent is is not a bad thing. But when you're flying a wolf, the transversal velocity of your opponent is almost unimportant. It's about as unimportant as it can be. I mean, you're going to be so close that it, unless you're monitoring transversal to decide on your own speed and tracking to avoid fire, like if you're taking fire from, say, an APOC at 80K, you could monitor transversal to make sure you keep your transversal above a certain point so that the APOC can't hit you. But as far as an offensive monitoring of transversal, in this case, it's absolutely useless. The better thing that he should have there, and the thing he doesn't have, is plain old velocity. Now, if you look, we're going to pay a little bit of attention now to the battle space. Battle space is two alliance members. They're both in the same alliance. Dramule and Vexor, they're ratting. Okay, they're in Jan. It's a point four system. Been there many times. Um... Ratting in a belt. So they're both together. They're ratting in a belt. But when you're looking at it from his point of view right here, one big problem you see is not only can you not tell if that Dramule is running at you besides looking at the distance decreasing, um, which you can do, and I'm sure that's what he was doing. Um, it's not the best thing to do. But just the, the distance here, that's not enough. To really be able to monitor what they're doing, I like to have both velocity and radio velocity. And radio velocity takes a little bit of getting used to, but basically, if you add radio velocity to your overview, whenever it's a positive number, that's the velocity that they're moving away from you at. Whenever it's a negative number, that's the velocity that they're closing on you at. So by monitoring and controlling radio velocity, you can control the speed at which you're coming together with your opponent. So in this case, if he had radio velocity up, he would notice that, okay, this Dramule has got his microwarp drive on, and its radio velocity is now, let's say, 3,500, negative 3,500. So the Dramule, the net effect, because he's moving away from the Dramule, so the full velocity of the Dramule isn't the real velocity that they're closing, because he's moving away. So since he's moving away, the actual net velocity that they're coming towards each other is the radio velocity of negative 3,500. And knowing that can affect your fi flying style and give you an advantage in certain situations. So also, by having velocity in general on your overview, you can see when your opponent kicks on his afterburner or micro warp drive. That's huge. If, ever, if you're like, in this situation, they're ratting, and you're, what is 80k off, um, by knowing that, you can know that, okay, the Dramiel was orbiting without microwarp drive on the rat. All of a sudden, his microwarp drive's on. 
he's probably not turning it on to continue fighting the rat. He's probably turning it on to come after you. So it's another good piece of information to have. Information leads to better decisions. So the more information you have and the more efficiently you can take in that information, the better and the faster decisions you're going to make. And the more you're going to win, the more you're going to survive, the more fun you're going to have, the better you're going to be. Huge stuff. So let's move on a little bit here. Okay, hold on. Drawing error. I got to turn off my drawler. There we go. Now, let's play the video. Now you see what he's doing. He's moving away. Now that's a good thing to do right now. When you have a target approaching you, let me pause it for a second. When you have a target approaching you, that's great. Move away because what that's going to do is it's going to affect the the angle of approach on your target. Like if he hit orbit at 10k or orbit at 15k and you're moving away from him, that's going to decrease his angle of approach. And it's kind of hard to explain right now if you don't get what I'm saying, but basically if you're not moving, then his angle is going to be, let's get our little drawler here. If you're not moving, his angle is going to be to come in like this and then approach and, and get his orbit. But if you're moving away, then in order to close the distance, he's going to have a shallower angle, which if he's coming to kite you, is going to give you an advantage because it's going to be harder for him to change direction at that shallower angle to avoid your tackle. And we're going to talk more about preventing the kite. That's another thing we're going to illustrate here that he could have done to, to make this a safer engagement. So targets the Dramule is approaching. Now we're about to get the lock here. He locked the Dramule at 32k. The Dramule is coming at him. He's locked it at 32k. The Dramule wants to tackle him. Um, this Dramule is being aggressive. Um, I think you can pick it apart and try to say, well maybe um, maybe he should have waited a little bit longer to lock the target to show his, you know, that he was wanting to kill the target. But at 30k, I think you're all right. Um, it looks like the train is closing a little bit slower than he should be. If you look at that, you know, in the last couple of seconds, he's only he's only gotten about 8k closer. That means that the train is probably afterburner fit, but I'm not so sure here. We do, we can't see the velocity, so we don't know. That's another thing that's important about seeing the actual velocity of the ship because if you see the velocity of the drama you'll know is he afterburner or is he micro warp drive just by experience um, a drama will go in four five six k a second micro warp drive um, even three k a second is usually micro warp drive um, slow but micro warp drive um, you see 1.5 to 2.5 k a second on a Dramiel, that's afterburner, and that you learn that from experience. It's different on a ship-by-ship -ship basis, but you learn that from experience, and the best way to really learn it is to fly it, and then you know from experience of flying the ship. So he's got the target locked. Here it goes. Um, the Vexer, you can't tell if the Vexer has changed his action to maybe come this way or not. His velocity, or his, his range, I should say, is now, I'm having trouble seeing it because I'm having to record at a smaller size. I believe that's 92K. So the Vexer is not in this fight. That's good. That means that what he's done now is he's done well. He has isolated the target. So moving on. Notice local just went up. We saw that because it's there and it, we catch it in our peripheral vision. It's important. All right. Now you see the Dramule is in at 7.3K, 7,300 meters. Now let's watch what happens here. Boom. Look at that. This is bad. Okay. CCP put this here to keep you from doing things that you may not want to do, but every time I have to reinstall the client or there's a big patch and they, and they reset this, it irritates me to no end and it almost always costs me a fight or a tackle. Um, are you sure? Disable this. Take the time to put do not ask me again or go into your options and do it there, but you do not want this to come up in the middle of the fight when you're rapidly trying to figure out what to do next and you got to get hurry up and get that lock hurry up and get the target and then what oh, I can't do anything because there's this window in front of me and I can't do what I wanted to do and what the heck now the opponent's already got five shots into me and I'm still trying to figure out what this window is in front of me and so now you've already had a disadvantage for the entire fight get rid of this stuff just get rid of it it's bad 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 don't continue every single fight saying yes I want to proceed get rid of it do not show again get it out of there it's terrible it's going to cost you fights so Moving on. Watch what happens here. Okay, hits yes. Fights on. They both exchange stuff. Now we're looking at the heat. 
He's overloaded his guns. He's overloaded his, his scram. Great stuff. Very good. Um, like I teach in my overloading management and every other video, I talk about overloading. In frigate fights especially, and, and others, most others as well, overload from the start. You don't wait until you're dead to throw your hardest punch. Hit hard from the start, and hopefully you can get the edge from the beginning of the fight. If you wait until you're already dead to start doing your best, it's too late to do your best. You're already dead. So, good job. Got to scram. One small little nitpick I would make here is the Dramule's well within scram range here. No need to keep that, that scram overloading. All right? Now, I want you to pay attention to distances here. Look at the distance of the Dramule. The Dramule obviously has the speed advantage. You see the transversal gives you an idea of the Dramule's speed. He's probably going about 1.5 at, at least and probably more like 2K a second. Look at the wolf. You see the wolf there. The wolf is still moving away from the Vexor. Now, if you're concerned about the Vexor running at you, yes, that's a good move. But in this case, there's enough isolation here. You don't have to really worry about it. Because look, look what happens here. The Dramule is moving away. Now look at the range there. 9K. The Dramule is now at 9K away. The reason for this mistake, he's running away from the Dramule. The Dramule is out of shields. At this point, the Dramule pilot, if he was paying attention and knew what he was doing, the Dramule pilot knows he's already lost this fight. This fight is already decided at this point. The Wolf has won. The Dramule has lost. A smart Dramule pilot at this point would hit keep at range, his keep at range button, which would then telephone keep at range button, which would then back him off the Dramule or off the Wolf, and he'd hit his micro warp drive and he'd rapidly increase his distance so that the Wolf's guns no longer did any damage. He'd escape. He has the speed advantage so he can disengage at will. That would be harder for him to do had the Wolf pilot approached. Now, we're going to go back a little bit and look at the approach. All right. On the approach, if I can get to it. On the approach here, right here. Well, let's go a bit further. Okay, right there. Now you can see at 16K, the Dramule is coming at him. The wolf's moving away. Now what you do here is you have to assume you don't always know that a Dramule is going to come in and brawl. He's not always going to come in and fight up close. Most Dramules will. But what you have to assume, and there are Dramules that do this, and it's your biggest threat, is he's going to kite you. He's going to come in and he's going to orbit you at 15, 16, 17, 18K, and he's going to kite you outside of your gun range. He's going to point you and he's going to have some setup where he can still do minimal damage from that range. And he's going to hold you there and slowly whittle away at you and maybe wait for his Vexor buddy to warp in and warp out. Or warp out and warp back in. So in this case, being in a short range wolf like this, getting kited is one of the worst things that can happen. So you want to take every effort to prevent yourself from being kited. In this case, you want to wait till he's on the approach. You're moving away. And you want to turn around right here at about 18K. He's approaching. At about 18K, you want to quickly hit approach. So what that's going to do is, like I was talking about before, let's pull the uh, marker up again, is he's coming rapidly at high velocity straight at you. You're moving straight away. Now, the agility of the ship, now Dramiel is very agile, but the agility means that for him to make the adjustment to stop, turn, and reverse his velocity completely the opposite direction is going to take him at least four or five seconds to completely reverse his speed and direction. So what you do here is, let me turn it off and back on, see if I can do that. All right, so by you turning and approaching him at this point, he's still approaching you. What you're going to get is even if he has his orbit set at 15K, 18K, what's going to happen, and I actually would recommend you start this turn in a little bit earlier, maybe 20, 25K, um, depending on his speed. If he was micro warp driving, I would do it actually at 30, 35K because he'd be micro warp driving at such a high rate of speed that you really need to do it a little bit earlier. But now all of a sudden you're compressing the distance between you two. So even if he did try to kite, 
you would effectively bounce him to within your scram range and you'd get the scram on him and you'd shut that micro warp drive down and then you would retain a advantage by you still having use of your micro warp drive most likely if he was set to kite he didn't have a scram um, you'd have use of your micro warp drive he wouldn't you'd dictate range you'd be able to get on top of him get real close and just annihilate him so basic tactics when fighting a Dramule in this situation would be approach with micro warp drive on that's what he should have done right here approach with micro warp drive on now still great fight but he would have killed the Dramule faster and he wouldn't have been at risk of losing the Dramule had he hit approach micro warp drive on so now we're gonna get back to that point we were at before and let's wait so the Dramule comes in does one orbit says Oh no, I'm in trouble. Starts to back off. So here goes the Dramel. He's backing off. All right. Let's go a little bit further. All right. Well, Dramel backs off all the way to 10K. Now, at this point, the overloaded scram actually maintains the point. It wasn't crucial, but it actually did help him here. Now, here's where the Dramel pilot makes a just absolutely unbelievable, terrible, bad error. The Dramiel pilot turns back in. He's basically at the edge of point range and has the ability to escape at will at this point. He turns back in. Ignore what's going on over here. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. So the Dramiel turns back in. See his velocity? He's coming back in. As he approaches, every meter he gets closer to this wolf, the wolf does more damage. And the problem is because he's basically approaching and he doesn't have any transversal, He's taking full hits from the wolf. So by him approaching, he just completely killed himself. Dramiel pilot, bad, bad choice. So here you go. He's coming in. He's getting close, and now he's starting to get into an orbit. Oh, but it's too late. You're in structure, and you're dead. So all good. Now let's go back and talk about what happened over here in the battle space. Now if you pay attention and you look here, you saw the blob coming in. By watching the overview, you see... Let's just watch the overview. Watch this section here. Right about here. Hurricane and Drake fleet warp in. They're coming at the same time on top of the Vexor. Now they're isolated. They are no threat to this fight. This fight can still go on. No threat. He was smart to keep the fight going. Everything's good. Hurricane and Drake cannot close 100k in the time this fight's going to take. All good. Keeping it going. I'm going to skip ahead. Vagabond. Okay, the Vagabond comes in at a different range. He's about 60k. Now watch his range as the fight ends. 61, 62, 64, 65. So the Vagabond's not actively coming in. But at 60k, the Vaga, depending on the pilot, depending on the setup, could close 60k with this wolf relatively quickly. Um... The Vaga could come in and get a point, and you don't know if he's got links and he can point from 30, 35k, maybe more. Um, so that's a big threat to him at this point. So he wisely, look at here, he warps off. Good choice. Um, get off the field. You may be able to take a Vaga. It's a tough fight, but you're certainly not going to take it when there's a fleet there. You're just out of a fight. You're, you know, your modules are heated. Uh, your cap's not as high as it would be. Just go ahead and take off. You can always come back if you want to take on the Vaga or have a shot at the Vaga and try to isolate him. Go ahead and warp out and recover from this fight before you pick a new fight. Um, unless you really have a lot of confidence in the situation, best thing to do. He makes a really good choice here. It's the Vaga. Now the Vaga's closing. Let's, uh, my video stopped. Let's look at the last few seconds of this. Boom. See... 47, I think it even gets down to 45. Yeah, 45. So you can see there, it looks like the Vaga has now, towards the very end of the video as he's warping out, turned in and started to approach. Another, I don't know, five seconds, and the Vaga probably would have had point on the wolf, and he would have lost his wolf. So he made a good choice there. Pop the target, get out, play it safe. Don't get greedy and try to loot. Um, Dramels often have faction loot, but if he'd have got greedy and tried to loot there, he almost certainly would have got tackled by the Vaga, and he would have died. 
So good choices. A couple small little things he can change about his overview to set um, velocity, um, ideally velocity and radial velocity. Um, little tactical changes. Approach um, the wolf versus Dramiel. In most cases, the Dramiel is going to be able to dictate range, and the Dramiel, once he realizes he's in trouble, is going to try to run away. So you want to minimize that range, not only to keep him within point range for as long as possible, but you want to minimize that range to do as much DPS as possible to limit his time in the fight so he can't make those decisions. He won't have time to make those decisions. So some basic things that will quickly improve his PvP and make him a better pilot and get him more fun. And that's what it's all about. More fun. Enjoy your game. Um, those who take the time to improve their skills, learn the game and get better at the game, have more fun at the game than those who get lazy and join fleets and don't and just rely on um, some mind-numbing blob PvP. Um, so good for him. He's getting out there. He's doing solo. Um, this video was made a while back. I'm sure by now he's out there and he's really just kicking butt. Um, so that's it. Um, direct feedback coaching is basically what you just saw where I take a video apart and I show you exactly how you can improve, how you can instantly get better. The little mistakes that you don't realize you're making, I can show you how you can quickly improve, how you can quickly correct those mistakes, and even little optimizations like your module placement, stuff like that. And it's very individual on a pilot-by-pilot -pilot basis. Now, some of these things will apply to all pilots, and I'm sure that any pilot that watches this video will learn a lot about PvP. However, What's important is that individuals make individual errors. Individuals might choose to orbit at the wrong time. Individuals might have their overview set up wrong. Individuals might use the wrong ammo. Individuals, every individual has a problem unique to themselves. Um, even I, I'm sure, make some mistakes that I don't realize I'm making. So by having someone else look at you and give you guidance and point out the things you can do better, you're going to make a very quick improvement to your PvP, and it's probably the easiest, fastest thing you can do to get better at PvP in EVE Online.